This bad boy is the new Colossus Bivy from Tracker, and as the name suggests, it is absolutely huge. Designed for the session angler, for guys that fish in pairs, takes up a massive amount of space, but boy, is it worth it. I've fished under this on purpose on my own just to get a feel for it, and I have to say, I am now converted. So, to talk to you about putting the bivy up, very similar to a normal Armo dome, to be honest. The ground sheet goes out first, that's absolutely huge. This swim coast point is a massive swim and it's taken up two thirds of it. So before you get one, you need to make sure it's gonna go in the swims that you're gonna be fishing. So ground sheet goes down first, then the inner tent goes up and the inner tent isn't waterproof. That's just like the sort of fly sheet material and that's what gives it the double skin eventually and keeps away the condensation. So that goes on, peg it down as normal. And then the outer skin goes on, that's got a separate rib at the front to pull it out further to create the pulch. It has to be pegged out separately, so there are a lot of pegs to go in with this bivy, but once it's up, it is worth it. Pegging it out separately keeps a gap between the two skins and means no condensation or water goes through. It's made out of the Aquatex material, which is totally waterproof. The water just beads off of that beautifully. And then to talk about a few of the features on the front of the bivy, we've got these huge mozzie panels on here. That's great when you're sitting inside. You've got a lovely view of the lake through these. And they zip pop back down and Velcro on as well. So when that Aquatex panel comes down, it's nice and neat and completely waterproof. Another nice feature is this strap. You've got it on either side of the bivy for keeping the rod in when it's sitting up there when you're putting another bait on. There's nothing worse than rod sliding off the bivy. And then the tubes that are actually making this bivy are much thicker than a normal bivy because it is so much bigger. And there will be a frame support to go with this when it does actually come out, which is going to make it even more sturdy, if that's possible. That's super, super sturdy as it is now. So they're the features on the outside of the bivy. Let's have a look inside. Check out my crib, look at that. Absolutely palatial in here. We've got two huge bed chairs inside and you can see how much room there is between them. And to talk to you about my side of the bivy, the east wing as it were, I've got all my stuff at the back there. Everything I normally take with me for my normal sessions has all disappeared at the back of the bed chair and there's still all that room between them. We've got space in the middle there for a bivy table and everything else. And to talk to you about some of the features, first of all, moving up to the roof here. Got a lovely mesh canopy to put all your clothing in to keep that out of the way. That's a really good idea. We've got a huge mesh panel at the back there. Obviously you can roll up the panel on the outside of the bivy as well and just let, let that air flow through the bivy. So on days like today, it's nearly 30 degrees outside. It's beautiful and cool in here. So that's a really, really nice feature. The internal door zips all the way up if you want it to, but in a fishing situation like this, obviously you've got it rolled down and there's a nice little bag. It's sewn into the integral ground sheet to stop it getting dirty as well. And then moving over to the other side, just to give you a bit more of an aspect of just how much room there is in this bivy. If that's not enough, there's another two and a half foot at the front, which is your porch. In it, I'm keeping my bait, so I don't have to store it inside the bivy. You could put wet clothes in there, guest chairs, whatever you want to. So if you're doing long sessions, you're going fishing with your boy or your missus or whatever, I cannot recommend the Colossus strongly enough. Tracker have got a new range of luggage out for 2010. It's called NXG, and as you can see here, very, very nicely styled, tone-on-tone -tone embroideries, nice little features like neoprene handles on a lot of the luggage. There's a lot of things in the range, and all of it's made from 600 denier polyester. So it's super, super durable. It's gonna last an extremely long time. Sort of things you can expect to see. There are boilie bags for carrying up to 10 kia boilies. There's a hook baits bag as well. They've got air dry bags in the range too plus rig stuff, there's stuff for all your hardware as well, and cooking stuff as well. And to show you this nice little bag at the end here, that's a bucket bag. Ideal if you're stalking, or if you want to keep your floater stuff separate from all your other tackle, that's what I do in mine. I've got all my floaters in there, all my bits and pieces on the outside, so I can walk around the lake when it looks rubbish and put a few mixers out and try and catch them off the surface. So that's all the accessory bags. Let's have a look at the rest of the luggage. The first in the range of NXG carry-alls is quite a novel product. Um, it's like a weekend bag, and I know that Ting Tong and his friend Mario use these a lot when they're going on their weekends to Barcelona together. Then also we've got a 50 litre rucksack, good if you're day fishing or not taking a lot of tackle with you. I use this one for stalking actually, it's great on your back when you're wandering around chasing the fish. And then underneath it, 
a medium carry, well, that's what I used to use to put all my tackle in. It just about fits in there, but now I've moved over to this bad boy. This is the compact barrow bag. Everything goes into there perfectly. Nice and rigid, the bag, lots of pockets on the outside. My bivy table just fits lovely in the top of there. So that's the newest bit of the range that has suited my fishing the most. That's how it's all gonna look in the tackle shops, boxed up like that, very professionally done. Let's have a look at the rod bags. There are several rod protection systems in the NXG range. First of all, the lightest weight of all. That's absolutely lovely, that, the nicest one I've seen, that lightweight quiver. And then looking up at the top of the rods, we've got tip protectors there, also in the range. And then going down to the reels, that's the neoprene reel protector and then the standard one as well. Very nice features of those. And if I can just turn that round, you've obviously got all your pockets for your landing net and all your bank sticks and everything as well. So super lightweight um, for the guy on the move. And then the next one, a bit more padding to this one. That takes two rods made up and then pockets on the outside. One for your net again, a pocket on the outside there for your landing net. And then one down there, you can strap in a brolly or something like that. So again, for uh, the angler on the move. And then to cover the rods completely, then you've got a rod sleeve like that, full rod sleeve. That comes in 12 foot or 13 foot sizes. And then this is the one that I use all the time. This is the, the main quiver in the range. So you've got lots of features to this one. Cut the pockets on the outside. I've got my way sling in there. Obviously a large inner cavity as well that you can get most of the bivvies inside. And then rods wise, I've got a three quarter sleeve on there. If I undo that and take that out. So it's three quarters of the way down the rod. More than enough protection in my opinion. This is a five rod quiver, but because the space is at the bottom that the rods actually slide into are so big, you can get even more in there. So sometimes when I'm fishing in the UK, I'm using up to seven rods in a session. So that's pretty much the complete range of NXG luggage from Tracker. There's something in there for virtually every carp fishing situation. Safe Zone leaders have been on the market for a few years now, but they're still underused in my opinion. Let's just show you the standard one, or the original one as it were. That's the standard one, ring swivel on the end there, so you can use it for loads of different things. They're basically made of 30 pound monofilament, and then they're coated in a polyurethane finish, and that's what gives it the colour. So there's no strength to the coating, um, but it gives it a fantastic colour. They're much better than lead core, because they blend in the, with the bottom far better. Um, this one's two foot long, it's got two bits of tungsten welded onto it in the middle to help pin it down on the bottom and we've got an exclusive on that one. This is the clay coloured one, there are four colours in the range. I'll show you that one actually set up. So here we've got a, a gravel coloured one with an inline lead on it. You could use that with a lead clip, running rig, whatever you wanted to do. And all I've done there basically is, is slid the rubber and the lead onto a stick needle and then pulled it onto the leader. You can slide them on the line before you tie them on and slide that down and then the ring swivel there is just semi-fixed into the nose of the lead, so just like a normal rig, that's going to pull out fairly easily. And if I wet this, because obviously when you fish with it, it's going to be wet, just to lubricate it up a bit, we show you the safety aspect, bump, and it's off. So you can fish inline leads with them no problem, running rigs as I've said, lead clips are going to dump the lead at the other end. Um, and then to talk to you about the next one in the range, that is the hybrid lead clip version. So this one's still two feet long with a hybrid lead clip actually fused on the end of it. So once that's tied on, that's going to last you for months, literally. Rubber comes with it as well. Always remember to wet that before you push it, the rubber on because they do tighten up in between sessions. And what I've done with this one, the hybrid lead clip comes with a ring swivel on the end of it. I've cut the ring off and replaced it with a quick link there so I can use my favourite uh, quick change system. because I've got a quick link there and a link loop on the end of it. This one I would fish if it's weedy or you need to dump the lead for any situation then I would use the hybrid one because the swivel's moulded inside it. If I grab hold of that lead and pull, doesn't matter how hard that rubber's on, the lead has got to come off because there's no way the swivel can pull out of that. And again, that's available in all the sizes as well. So if you need to dump the lead regularly, that's the one that I would recommend. And the last one in the range is this fella. It's the helicopter stroke chod version. 
You see there, we've got, I've taken the hook link off of it and actually replaced it with a, with a little chod rig there just to show you how it works. This is the silt colour. When you drop this into silt, it's absolutely perfectly matched to silt. All the colours have been matched exactly to the lake bed. So we've taken scrapings of the lake bed, taken them back to work, and the people that manufacture these for us have sent us five or six different dark browns, and I've dropped all of those onto silt and picked the one that's exactly right. So all the colours you know blend in perfectly. The weed blends in with weed, gravel with gravel, clay with clay. So I just swap these around around depending on where I'm actually fishing and if I can show you this end we just pull that off there I've got a swivel distance lead that I've actually cut the swivel off of clipped it onto that quick link that comes on the end of the helicopter stroke chod version and then you push that heli rubber down over it nothing could be neater than that and then if I pull the other swivels down also the other beads down sorry that's how you could set it up if you wanted to as a helicopter rig. So there's absolutely no play in it whatsoever. Obviously for a choddy, you'd want that top bead a lot further away. So we wet that and that bead is designed to sit on the two bits of tungsten that are actually on the leader. So it's tight on those, but the rest of the leader, it just slides down it. So again, if the line snaps, the fish is going to drag that lead around. It's going to push that bead off and the fish is away. And if you can see on that bead as well, there's a groove in that. And basically what that groove is for is to tie PVA around it to tighten up its grip on the cast. So if you've got a PVA bag on or you're whacking it really hard, the movement of that, of that hook link there can actually push the bead off the top of the leader. So by tying PVA around it, it just basically stops that happening. They come with a size eight ring swivel on them. I've replaced that with a size 11 for my chod rig just because it's a bit neater. And if you're going to cast a long way, that's the one we recommend. Having the lead on the end of the line, just like the sea anglers fish, helicopter style like that, is going to cast further than any other. Situations I wouldn't use this one in. If it's really, really weedy and you use this with a heavy lead, you can get problems because the lead's trailing below it. There's no way the lead can eject and you do get problems with it. So I reserve these for less weed, fishing in silt, or if you're absolutely blasting it a million miles, um, then that's what I recommend. So there's three in the range, they last absolutely forever. One little tiny thing, the loops you've got on the top there, which we've made as small as possible so everything can get off, out off the end of the leader, you will find the line with repeated use will cut into that loop. That doesn't matter at all because all it's doing is cutting through the polyurethane finish on it rather than cutting through the 30 pound mono underneath. So I recommend you tie a Palomar knot to that because it's twice through the eye and I've never ever had that go and I've got leaders that I've probably had three or four years now that I'm still using, so well worth the extra expense. Sig rigs are one of my favourite styles of fishing and in Gigantica the lake's really deep so I've had to use a different style called the adjustable zig and that's exactly how I caught this little baby. So I'm going to show you how to use them right now. Zig rigs, an awesome method, but underused and misunderstood. I don't know why more people aren't out there using them. They've caught me so many carp on so many places. But hopefully, after a chat with my mate Dovey, we're going to put you on the road to success. So firstly, Tom, what is a zig rig? Basically, a zig rig is a suspended bait in mid-water, two-thirds depth, anything like that, um, that will catch carp in mid-water, basically. Well, now, people seem to forget that carp spend the majority of their time actually off the bottom. Yeah, swimming around. I mean, they only go down to the bottom when they want to feed, basically, don't they? Yeah, yeah, but uh, I mean, a lot of people also forget there's so much food in mid-water. So, you know, a lot of natural food, Daphnia, yeah. some of the, the, the little flies and stuff. Even that... the small, small uh, fish in that I've seen them eat. Yeah, so, tadpoles, yeah. all of them things. And, and people forget that. And this, is, this sort of method taps into that predatory instinct of a fish. So, Tom, how does it work? Basically, it's a standard knotless knot with a light nylon. Yep. Um, and you'd tie your hook link as long as you want that to float up in the water. So if you tie it three foot, that's how high it'll float in the water. Okay, okay. Now, just give us some guidelines on depths, Tom. I mean, a lot of lakes that you fish in the UK are sort yeah. of seven yeah. to ten foot, aren't they? Yeah. What, what's a good starting point with a zig? Um, depending, like, in midsummer, if you can see them blatantly on the surface, you know, where, you, where you'd want to fish a surface bait, or one yeah. really close to the surface, obviously, if it was eight foot, I'd fish seven and a half foot just beneath the surface. Yeah. Um, but in the spring, when you think they're probably just in the upper layers, I'd generally sort of go two thirds depth. Yeah, I mean, that's a good, that's a good depth, isn't it? Because spring, the upper layers yeah. warm up first, the carp have been down there, moody for a few months in the winter haven't exactly, they? Yeah. so they're going to get excited aren't when they it's warm and, yeah. uh, and that's when you tend to catch them in the spring zigs do work the best in the spring without a doubt yep and then um and then in the summer i'd fish them slightly higher 
but two first depth is a, is a good, good starting point. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the lead system because it's all well and good using a zig at sort of three or four foot, yeah. um, but it must be quite difficult with a long hook link like that to have a big lead bouncing around. Exactly, yeah. So I'd always fish it with a, with a lead clip or a drop off an inline, but generally yep. a lead clip, yep. just to make sure you get rid of lead every single time because it just becomes a nightmare if you've got a fish on and the lead's bouncing around. So fish pulls that way, lead comes off, and you're playing the fish rather than the yeah, lead. Yeah, directly straight to the fish. Right, excellent. Now, Tom, there's a lot of lakes, like Gigantica, yep. that are deeper than 10 foot, yep. and as a result, it's difficult to cast a 15 or 16 foot hook link. Exactly. Yeah. How do you get around that? Suspendable zig with a float. Right, okay. Now I know you're very familiar with this method and you've used it to great effect on some very tricky lakes in England, haven't mm -hmm. you? H how does this work and how do you tie it up? It's the same concept with a, with a floating bait, um, but you've got a hook link of maybe three or four foot long. Yeah. Um, and then you've got a float underneath it with a running lead beneath that. So basically you'd cast it out like a, like a marker float. And uh, this doesn't change the length of this, but basically you, you'd let the line out so the float comes up yep. to change the depth of what you want to fish this at. Okay, so let's let's run through how we tie it. So we've we've got a mixer hook on there, haven't we? Yeah. And a little bit of yellow foam, so that's just tied knotless knot to some uh, cruise control mono. Yep. And then if you have a look there, just got a little ring. It's just a little rig ring, and then that's the the, the sort of one of those pike sub floats, isn't it? It is a pike so, one, yeah. So that's running on there. Then a four mil bead and just a running lead. Yeah, you could, I'd always use the smallest lead you can get away with as well because it, it just stays, you know, a better casting because if you've got a big lead on there, it makes it even more difficult. Yeah, less splash. It could dig into the bottom, yeah. cause resistance as it comes up. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so, so you've cast this out, okay? And um, there's, a, there's a style to the casting, isn't there, Tom? Yeah. Um, instead of stopping it before it hits the surface, which generally makes it tangle with this for some reason, um, you're better off letting it dive in um, and then stopping it as it's sinking. Okay. And then as it hits the bottom, that's when you'd let it up and it all floats up perfect. So on the surface, you'll have your bit of foam, which is used to help sort of eliminate tangles yep. and your float. Okay. And as you start pulling it from the reel line, that goes down and that will... The float will go down. Before you cast out, just take note of how long your hook link is exactly. Yeah. You so pull that mount under and then you know that it's a straight line directly from the float to that. Yeah. So it slides along, doesn't it? As that's going down, that slides along the surface. Yeah. And then say it's three foot, you've pulled that under three foot, your hook link's three foot, that's there. Yep. And then every foot you bring down... That's how much it's underneath the water surface. Right, okay. Now, an important point that I want to ask you, Tom, is do, do you adjust it much through the day or once you've cast it out, is that the, the depth you keep it at? Yeah, if I'm not getting bites, I'll adjust it every half an hour, maybe drop it a foot or put it up another foot, um, and eventually you'll find the right depth. As long as you're taking note how much you're pulling under surface, yeah. your next time you put it out, you can put it down to that length exactly yeah. and, and hopefully get a bite straight away again. Yeah, of course, that's the beauty of it as well. Unlike a normal zig, where if you're not at the right depth, you have to wind it in, Recast, redo that. Yeah. This one, that's it. You, you, you cast one that. One disturbance and then you can find a depth within, within a few hours. And then you catch in and then you know the magic depth. Exactly, don't you? Yeah. Right, brilliant, what a method. And finally, hook baits. We've got a little menagerie of them here, Tom. I suppose that's all one needs to uh, haul on zigs. Yeah, exactly. Right, now, I know you said that's one of your favourites, black foam. Why is that? Um, it just seems to work really well in clear water. I think the silhouette of it um, is, is more obvious than anything else. And it just seems to work really well. And it resembles a lot of natural food. So, so you'd cut it down just to sort of a little five mil piece, ideal. That's one of my favourite hook baits, Tom. Yellow, yellow phone, yeah. Can't beat. I caught Works so many fish. Doesn't it? Yeah, you can't beat a bit of yellow. And then our little plastic friends, glow in the dark one, Tom. Just for another night hook bait. Yeah, it's worth a go. Yep. And then just yellow bits of corn. When you're spotting sweet corn and stuff like that, if you spot over zigs, a double one of them on the hair, like so, it's brilliant. Just you know, it resembles what's in your spot mix, doesn't it? Yeah. And then. Is a little one for the old English summertime, bit of cork. Yeah, uh, cork's best when you're feeding mixes. If you're surface fishing, you're not getting much luck. Try a zig just underneath the surface, and it looks like a, a mixer that's just sunk down a little bit, and they seem to take that really willingly. Yeah, you don't need to keep casting that out either, do you? No. It just sits there until one snares it. Well, there we go, guys. A short but concise look at zigs. Ignore them at your peril. We're going to talk spotting and spot mixes now. So first of all, this is the munger that I use on most waters, certainly in the UK. 
That's chili hemp from Bait Tech, which I rate really highly. Also their party mix, which has got loads of little bits and pieces in it. I've chucked a little bit of maize and stuff in there as well for colour and to give me some other options on hook baits. And then I've ground up some cell boilies in the calder crusher and put those in as well. And I've added a little tiny bit of ground bait to this one because I'm going to spot it straight away and I don't want to lose any bait out the back of it. Normally, I would let the boilies absorb all that goodness from the hemp and the party mix and that will stodge it up just a little bit and then you won't lose any out the back. No pellet in there at all for most of my fishing because generally it brings the bream in. So that's what I recommend in the UK. In Gigantica, no point using that whatsoever. I reckon less than 10% of that will actually get to the bottom because there's so many roach in here, they'll eat the hemp on the way down. In 20 foot of water, it probably won't ever get there. So this is the Gigantica version which Danny affectionately terms as monkey sick. Um, much, much bigger items in there. They drop through the water quicker, harder for the roach to eat. Um, so that's what goes in the lake and that's actually prepared here for you fresh. Um, so you don't have to bring your own. There's a few tigers mixed in there as well that you can pick out for hook baits. And obviously maize and yellow peas are great hook baits as well. So they're the two different mixes, the Euro and the English version. And then the spod rod and reel, is my old faithful Infinity Spod Rod. This is the blank that the, the Infinity Spod Rods, the factory built ones, were basically designed on. Um, it's basically a 13 foot, three and three quarter fishing rod cut down to 12 foot. So it's about four and a quarter, four and a half test curve. Very, very fast taper, very fast recovery. Spod's an extremely long way. And then the reel is the Emblem Spod Reel. Only 75 turns for 100 yards retrieve on that. So it makes the job a lot easier. It's like 25 turns faster than most of the other reels. So 10 spods, that's 250 turns less. And then the spod itself, if I can just take that off, that is the Calder Skyliner that's been out for years now. I'd say that's probably the number one spod in the UK, hopefully in Europe as well. And the changes we've made to that, you can see there we've got a stiff tail, a moulded tail that's got 45 pound braking strain. That just clips in once you buy the spod, you just clip it in yourself. There's the three locating holes there, one, two, and three. Just clip them in, number to number, and that's it. And then just tie the line to the loop at the top. You don't need a swivel or anything on these. Works absolutely perfectly. So I've got my marker float out there now. I've chucked it out to where I'm fishing on this session, which is about 95 yards. So we're gonna get this one out there and then show you the other spots in the range. So I've got my bucket in front of me. I've got another bucket with water in right next to it just to wash my hand off. I've already wet the braid up. That's very, very important. So that it comes off the spool really easily and doesn't frap up. Check behind me. All the way back and out there. It's got a little bit left, that one. Right. For English fishing, that's miles too far away. Uh, but I'd like the spod to be three to four foot either side of the marker, and that's where all my rods would go in the UK. So that's a little bit too far, but it shows you how easily that spod is cast 90 yards. Now, before you wind it in, just flick it a couple of times to shake the gear out of it, and then rod up, and with the floating braid I've got on, I've got 20 pound floating braid to a 30 pound armor called leader. So the leader knot is absolutely tiny. That takes the force of the cast. And look at the beauty of these spods, how easily they come back in again. Don't have to pump the rod or anything, just constant winding gets you out there. There we go, up to my hand, straight into another spod full, three quarters of a spod, push it down with your fingers, wash your hand off, and then straight up and back into it. All my weight on my back foot to start off with, transferring through to my front foot. That's better. There we go. Within a couple of foot of the marker. So that is the Skyliner. Gets a load of bait out really quickly. Weighs about five and a half ounces when it's full of gear. And that's what I'd recommend if you're going up to probably 120 yards and you've got to get loads in as quickly as possible. This is the Sky Raider Spod, probably the number one long range spot out there at the moment. And that's because it's tapered towards the back. So more weight in the front of the spod, keeps it more stable in the air and makes it cast further. Slightly smaller payload than the Skyliner, weighs about four and a half ounces when it's full of gear. Still the high-vis nose cone, 
that you see on the skyline and spods as well and that brings it up to the surface really quickly and helps the bait dump out of it. Now I'm going to cast this one out to the marker which is about 90-95 yards to show you how easy it is. If you're struggling with the other one swap over to this and it'll get the distance quicker and then I'm going to blast it and let's just see how far past the marker it'll go. So exactly the same drill, fill it up sort of almost to the top and then press it right in there so all the weight is in the nose of the spot, wash my hand off and the drop is about half the length of the rod make sure that that bail arm's locked and out we go right that's hit the clip about 20 foot up in the air so that just that little flick there would have gone even further so we're going to take it out the line clip these emblem spots are brilliant because the line clip on them is huge, so it doesn't mark the braid at all. You could even spot with mono and it wouldn't be a problem. So I've taken it out of the clip, just as always, flick it a couple of times just to clear it and then strike that floating braid up off the surface and just get it out of the water straight away. And that will come in just as easy as the Skyliner because of the way we've done the holes on it. Important not to fight with the spot at this point, just a steady pace when you're winding in. We'll keep it on the surface and watch straight up to my hand into the bucket fill it right up to the top and then really press it down that stops anything coming out the back of the spot it just makes it more stable in the air right let's give this one a go Well, that is at least 70 yards past that, I would say. So in, in calm conditions, that's 160 yards, I reckon. I've almost cast all the, all the braid off the reel. Um, and that's uh, without practice. Once you get into it, you can get it further and further and further. And because they fly so straight, doesn't matter what the conditions are like, you can drop it on top of that marker float every single time that's important when you're spotting to keep all the bait in one spot so they're the long range versions let's have a look at spotting in a little quiet corner this little fella is the mini skyliner perfect for swims like this this is scotty's corner very very quiet if the fish are in here you don't want to make a load of commotion and use one of the bigger spots like the normal skyliner so we swap over to this one exactly the same as the rest of them just fill it up three quarters full press him down and then out we go and this fella is just on a normal cart rod this is a three and a quarter infinity you can see that it's hardly even bending the tip of the rod but you can put it on any cart rod sort of two and three quarters and above and we're gonna we're gonna fish it against the clip just like we do on all the others no spillage dink just makes hardly any splash at all almost nothing i think ali said it makes a little ploop as it hits the surface on one of the tv shows and we just give it a little flick just make sure all the gears out of it and then wind it in and a great little tip on this product is you can spod to your area and then take the spot off your fishing rod put the rig on it and then you know you're spotting almost exactly over the top of the rig so a very stealthy little product great for getting small amounts of bait into an area where the fish are already feeding and how about that for a brute of a carp 44 and a half pounds tamed on the new DF Infinities fluorocarbon main line with the old faithful safe zone leaders and hybrid hook link and that all important cell hook bait. Wicked. Well, as you can probably tell, um, the seasons have changed a little bit. We're back at Gigantica again for the end of October, primarily here to film two TV shows for the Thinking Tackle Sky Sports um, series 5 um, which is going extremely well that's going to be on air in the spring of 2010 um, but one of the other reasons for coming back was to show you these fantastic new reels from Daiwa um, I've been using them this week I've uh, retired the Baziers for the time being and uh, I have to say I am massively impressed with them um, they feel so solid it is just ridiculous um you know like the guts are going to last forever in them 
Oh, there's big boils coming up here from this fish. It's still a little way out now. The clutches on them are super, super smooth. Um, there's three in the range. I'm using the top of the range at the moment, which is the Z, which has got more ball bearings, a quick drag facility on it, just like the tournament ISO, oh, tournament ISO and the uh, infamous Bayesier and Bayesiers. Um, there's the clutch going now. And there are three sizes to them. There's a 4,500, a 5,000 and a 5.5. The bodies are all the same size and uh, it's just the depth of the spool. This fella's coming in real close in front of me now. Still haven't seen him. Um, and basically, they, the dearer they get, the more ball bearings they've got and the nicer the handle. But most importantly, all of them have got... Oh, he's going. I think this is a good fish, you know. All of them have got superb line clips, the same quality of line clips on all the reels, from the cheapest to the dearest. And uh, that's essential for modern day carp fishing because I'm fishing against the clip all the time to get the range the same every cast. And uh, oh, he's going crazy, this fish. Really boring down deep on the bottom. And now the old knees have started to shake. The other nice thing that Dyer have done with these reels is they've kept the colours really carpy right the way through the range. And uh, these dearest ones are a sort of nice gunmetal colour. Right, the fish has gone the other side of my line, so rather than dragging back, I'm going to step over the rods and net him the other side. see the clutch working there super super smooth and uh, if I didn't already have baziers I would be more than happy to use these it's a nice mirror looks like uh, at least an upper 30 and he's proper rucking and uh, these reels coupled with anything from the Daiwa stable these are the Infinity DFs um, but any of their long casting rods will be a lovely combination. <sighs> That's quite a big carp, that is. Oh, get that line out of the tree. Come on. Oh, come on. In you come, in you come. Yes, got him, come on! That is wicked, well chuffed with that, well chuffed. And how about that for an impressive creature? A fish called Singles Mate, 44 and a half pounds. Absolutely over the moon to get this one. And uh, I can't recommend those wing casts strongly enough. Whatever your budget, there's a reel there for you. And whether you're rowing out a million miles or casting it to the horizon, I'm sure they're going to cope with it with flying colours. Wicked. What a lovely 27 pound comment. A real bruiser this one, taken on a cell boilie. But if you don't know, Mainline do an amazing range of ready-mades. And we're going to have a look at them right now. With Mainline's loyal following in Europe, and also now with Corda's distribution of their bait in Europe, it's really possible to get some of their best baits right on your doorstep. So let's have a look at the proactive range, because there's some awesome ready-mades here that can really make a difference on short sessions. The beauty about them is they come in some of the most popular flavours that have been around for a number of years now. What can you say? Sweet pineapple, an absolute winner that has been catching carp, not just in Europe, not just in England, but all over the world. The beauty also is that they're complemented with pellets, pop-ups and dips. So you can really work some magic with some wonderful different ingredients. Got here, the tuna ready-made. What a wonderful flavor. If I have a whiff of that, 
if you put your nose up to the speaker, you might get a smell of that as well. That's really meaty. That just smells like a tin of tuna. And again, comes with pellets, comes with the dips. For those of you who want a really stinky fishy bait, then look at that, a proper big fish one. The halibut, look, as dark as you like. That will really pick out some of the big specimens in the venues you're fishing. And again, with the pellets and the dips. Well, that's just a small selection of them. There's also tiger nut, tutti frutti, and a few more on the horizon. So no matter what your favorite taste or what your favorite flavor is, there's something for all of you. The boys at Aqua Products have pulled out all the stops to get us the brand new bivvy designs to show you on the DVD. We've not had Aqua on here before and I have to say I'm massively impressed with both the build quality and the materials used. This is the M3, it's their flagship bivvy. This will do absolutely everything. You can do an overnighter in it or do a week or two week session on a massive French reservoir. It does the lot. It's a new Aquatex material. 20% improved on the old one, and I have to say I absolutely love the colour. It's got loads of features to it. First of all, this peak will zip off if you want it to. I'd like to have it on there all the time because it stops the rain getting inside it. And if we move down to the front panels here, the whole lot of these will zip off if you want to, which gives you a wonderful view of the lake. And then obviously you can zip it back on again, and you can have these huge mozzie windows open how I've got it now so you can see the lake. If it starts to rain, you can just zip them back and they go lovely and flat on there. And the door's got several features on it as well. Once that's rolled down, you can have a mozzie panel or you can have a clear panel as well. So if it's pouring with rain, you can have the door zip down, see through the clear panel, no rain gets in there whatsoever. You can see inside we've got a huge tracker bed chair in there that goes in there easily. And another nice feature at the back of it, we've got a huge vent which lets the air come through. So on those hot sunny days when the bivy tends to heat up, you can roll that up and the air will come through there and cool everything down. Now it's got a two joint system. So it goes up really quickly and that gives it that lovely curved feel to it as well. And the ground sheet that comes with it is probably the heaviest duty ground sheet I've seen on any bivvy anywhere. It also comes with a tensioning strap so you can fish it in the summer without the ground sheet if you want to. And this interlocking frame support system that makes the bivvy even stronger. And if that's not enough, you've got a couple of Velcro tags there to stop the rod from sliding off. The whole thing comes in a heavy duty bag that's perfectly designed. This bivvy will cope with absolutely anything that carp fishing can throw at it. For all you mobile anglers and people who do lots of overnighters, this thing of beauty is the Aqua Carbon Compact. Gets its name from these carbon poles here. They've got a weave around. It's an industry first to have a bivvy like this with carbon poles on it. So it's mega, mega light, but very strong as well. This is everything that you get with it. You can see there, the updated version here has got a new peak on it, which the old one needed. This has got it, that stops the rain from going into it. If we go down to the panel at the front here, we've got a zip-on panel there with great big mozzie windows there to give you a great view of the lake. The door obviously has got the mozzie panel in it as well, but it's also got a clear panel. So if it's absolutely pouring down with rain, you can have that on and still see the lake as well. They've added a vent into the back of it just to let the air flow through. And this version, we've got the heavy duty ground sheet with it as well. It comes with a tensioning strap as well. So in the summertime, when you don't need the ground sheet, you don't need the infield panel, it weighs absolutely nothing and goes up in seconds. Now it's got a two rib design. So it means it goes up even quicker. It's nice and compact, so it fits into little tiny swims. This is Scotty's Corner, probably the smallest swim on the lake, and it's got in there easily. Bed chair goes in there, absolutely no problem. It comes in a super hard wearing and totally waterproof material called Aquatex. You've got the frame support system that comes as standard to strengthen it up even more. And the whole lot goes into a really high quality bag with lots of different sections to make it easy to pack away. So if you're doing overnighters and you're stripping everything down to the bare essentials, I can't recommend it strongly enough. This is the legendary Aqua Bivy system been going for years and it's got a brilliant reputation they fully updated it for 2010 first of all we've got a ninth rib on this brolly so that one comes forward gives you more of a peak there's probably six inches extra there to stop the rain from coming in and then we've got loads of features on this so if we go down here we've got a fully zipped in infill panel and you can see it's got huge mozzie panels on there so you've got a great view of the lake they zip down so they go nice and neat and tight, one of those on both sides. On the door, 
You've got the mozzie panel on the door if you want it. There's also a clear panel as well, so if it's pouring with rain, you can have that on. And no rain's coming in, but you can still see the lake. And obviously the full door as well. I've got this wound up out of the way so you can see inside. And inside the brolly, you've got more than enough room for a bed chair in there and all your other bits and pieces. And it goes up just like a brolly, just snaps up in seconds. So if it's pouring with rain, you can put your gear under it straight away. The back pegs go in first, and then you put the side storm poles in and then the front one's in as well if you're going to use the infield panel. So it goes up extremely quickly. It comes with a heavy duty ground sheet. I've not used it on this occasion because most people that fish under brollies don't use them. The storm poles are all included as well, as are the pegs. And it's made out of the famous Aquatex material, so it's 100% waterproof. You are going to pay a premium for all aqua products, but to be honest, it's worth every penny. The materials are top of the range, the designs are brilliant, and they're built to last forever. Okay, now we're going to give you an overview, a little insight into the whole range of quarter hooks. All the guys are going to give their opinion, their two penneth on what they use, what their favourite hook is, and what they use it for. First of all, I'm going to tell you mine. This is the Choddy. Been using this for all of my boilie fishing for, uh, well, obviously since before it came out when we were testing it, and uh, I think it's been out nearly a couple of years now. The, the whole range of quarter hooks have been market leaders in the UK and in Europe for a long time now. So we're going to show you the reasons why we think they are market leaders and also why they're our personal favourites. This choddy hook is a perfect case in point, no pun intended. It's got a beautiful curved beaked point, which really, in my opinion, for a pop-up hook means that you're going to land more fish. In fact, for any hook, if you've got a beaked point, it's going to stay in better. Look at what happens in nature. You've got claws that animals and birds use to grip onto things. A claw shape will mean that it stays on the end longer. Some people think maybe a straight point will prick more fish. Perhaps in a bottom bait fishing situation you could argue that, but for pop-up presentations, which is what I mostly use the Choddy for, it's going to find a purchase just as easily and it's going to stay in longer. The Choddy is one wire gauge heavier than a wide gape, so it's stronger. It's got a lot of flat forging around there to give even more strength. It's got a nice big eye so that you can get your stiff material through three times. Very, very strong, very reliable. My favourite is the Choddy. My favourite hook, the Long Shank X. We'll start by looking at some of the credentials of the hook. Probably the most important factor is the razor sharp point. I set it up there, the bit of silicon, I'll tend to pull that just round on the bend, which does help with the flipping. You can see that just resting in the hand. You turn it, bang, it's in every time. Another factor that aids the flipping of the hook is the shrink tube there. I don't have it sort of so aggressive like some, I just have it on a slight angle so that once it brushes on its top lift it flips and it grabs it. And as you can see there's such, there's, there's a really good distance there between the tip of the shrink tube and the tip of the razor sharp hook. Another good thing for the rig is good separation with the bait. You've probably got about a centimetre there from the bottom of the hook to the bottom of the bottom bait. I mean that is set up as a snowman which is, it's ideal for a venue like this where it's clear, there's no weed, but I would use this in silt. A lot of venues in England, I mean that's a size 6, but I would have no hesitation in chucking that out in some ponds in England. Frimley uh, was down to a size 10, a couple of 10 mil wafters and just a little shot on the hair just to balance everything out. But the essence of the rig was perfect. I'm just so confident in the way that that hook turns and grabs, you know. So yeah, my favourite hook, the Long Shank X. My favourite hook in the whole world has to be the wide gape. Myself and Damien spent about a year developing these, took loads of samples to get them right, but when they came out they were absolutely perfect. And ever such a slightly in-turn point to grab hold and stay there, a slightly in-turned eye to help the hook turn over and grab as well, flat fold so it's really strong, PTFE coated, and most importantly, super, super sharp. When these first turned up, me and Damien promptly won the British Championships on them, so they are very dear to my heart. I use them for bottom baits, I use them for pop-ups as well. In England I use the 10s for zigs, 8s for most of my fishing and 6 if it gets weedy and then in Europe I'll probably go up to a size 4. They come in barbless and an X size as well. So barbless obviously no barb on it, a little bit thicker in the wire so that when it penetrates it stays in with that thicker wire. I've had fish up to £62 in France on that one and the X is thicker still so if you're hooking and holding go for the X, any other time trust a wide gape. My favourite hook is the quarter curve. 
It's a hook that I've been using probably for two years now, mainly in conjunction with the KD and the muzzle rig. I've been lucky enough to catch some beautiful big carp, both at home and in, here in France, firstly at Sky Lakes with Thinking Tackle, where I managed to catch both mirrors and commons to over 44 pounds, and most recently here at Gigantica, one of the massive giant carp here, the Twin, at fi over 53 pounds. Due to the curved nature of the shank of the hook and the wide gape, it lends itself perfectly to very simply tied rigs. A knotless knot without rings, without silicon or even shrink tubing is all you need. So whether you're fishing pop-ups, bottom baits or even zig rigs, as long as you've got the right size of hook for the size of your bait, is a hook that you can use with complete confidence. I know I do. So there you go, a fascinating insight from all the corder guys on their favourite hook in the range and what they use it for. You probably gathered from watching that that we're all hugely passionate about hooks. We take each one, starting with a blank sheet of paper and design it from the very beginning. What we're going to use it for, how it's going to be made, what wire we're going to make it from and turn that into a specification sheet. That then goes off to our own manufacturer who we believe is the best Japanese hook maker in the world. They make samples and prototypes. Once they've gone through that process, they end up as the hooks on the market for you guys to use. We believe they're the best hooks in the world and we hope you do too. Well, I don't quite know uh, how to put this, um, but uh, the one that I really, really, really wanted to catch is in the sling right now. Um, I had him uh, in the wee hours of the night, um, a funny bite that turned into a full-blooded run, felt big all the way in. And, uh, and it's turned out to be the proper big one. Uh, so we're going to hoist him out and uh, show you just how magnificent the giant looks. Hamid, can you uh, get the other end of this sling? Because he is absolutely massive. No, do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fish, deal with it. <laughs> get the other end of that. Oh my God, it's so big. I haven't got, oh, I've got straps, that's a result. Right, let's just check, check, his, check fins. his fins, yeah. bruv. That's tiny, Dan. I don't even, don't even know why you're bothering filming it. Look at it. Oh, my God. That's it. That's all right. Yeah? Yeah. <coughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, he's... No, it's all right. His fin's fine. Oh, God. <coughs> And how about this to end the DVD? 72 pounds, the giant. Oh, I just can't believe it. I just cannot believe it. Oh, taking on a size four long shank X. Me new DF Infinities, what a way to christen them. Hybrid hook link and that all important cell hook bait. I'd like to thank everybody who's appeared on the DVD for their contribution and all the manufacturers without whom the DVD would not be possible. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the bank sometime. Woo, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and there he is. One last look at the giant. Look at that. And he's only going to get bigger. Oh, in you go, my love. 
you are one monstrous creature. And off he goes into the depths. Enormidon, come on! Yeah! <laughs>